Alrighty, well hello everyone, and how are you guys doing? Tireless Gun here with another Tireless Talk, and I know it's been a while, and I said I wanted to make more of these because they're easy, but as of late in game, I haven't been doing much, and I haven't been thinking of a whole lot to talk about, a lot of PVM, real life, having an 8 to 5 job really keeps you on your toes, but... Um, I do have a talk for today, and I also have another one that I want to talk about next week, provided a certain update may or may not come out next week. We'll see, depending on the next time the topic is relevant. I thought I would release one on that, but for right now, um, I was going to release that topic today, but I saw something way more important, way more cool to talk about, and that is that Mod Ollie released some information on the new Saren quest that's coming out, which will release the new spells and prayers, which, man, I remember when they were talking about the Elf City, they were saying it's going to come with uh, different spells and prayers and all these other different things that are going to be unique to like the elven and they're probably going to be some sort of like useful thing they're not sure what it's going to be it's going to be like lunars but they wanted it to be combat as well for high levels they weren't necessarily sure as to what they were going to do well now they've released some information and i am so happy to see that they're focusing on the support and tank roles of the game, which is something I think this game is lacking a whole lot of. Now, I know there are different times in this game where, well, mostly just Virango, where there's like a tank role, you're the bomb tank, or you're the base, something like that. But there's not a whole lot of variety in the setup for those people. Yeah, they like wear a shield the whole time, and DPS doesn't wear a shield the whole time. So it's kind of like, yeah, I guess I'm doing something different. I'm using a variety of defensive skills instead of being purely, you know, attacking. But at the same time, there's not like a whole variety to that. They're not like on a whole different spell book, a whole different set of prayers. They don't change a whole lot aside from maybe wearing defensive gear and having a shield. There's not a whole lot of variety to them. They don't bring a whole lot more to the table aside from throw those bombs at me. And there are other bosses too where... Like, Rise of the Six, no one really tanks. Like, sure, someone may take Darok or uh, someone else, you know, who does a little bit more damage over time or something like that. But no one necessarily goes, I'll be the tank. They also pointed out, like, a Rax or Duo. Uh, I can see some people being like, you know, focus more on me, I'll do more damage and that kind of stuff. But it's not really a main focus of this game. And I'm really excited that they looked at this and they said, you know what, we can do a whole lot with this. And just from reading it, ah, so excited. Well, let me go over with you guys kind of my thoughts, my ideas, and things that I read about this. Um, I'm going to go through all of the combat abilities, all the prayers, all the spells, all the skills, all the things that they kind of have in here. And to kind of give my thoughts on everything. I, this is probably going to be a longer tireless talk because I only read through this maybe like three or four times so I have a good general idea as to what the information is but at the same time I may need to reread it again to make sure that I'm actually saying it right and I have a good concept of what they're trying to put out in the game so um let's start up here for combat like I said for combat they're focusing on the support and tank roles which is gonna be awesome for spells they have crystal totems create and place down crystals that have different effects for plate for for people for people for people within a certain radius so this would be like an item that you put down and everyone within X amount of squares gets this buff uh, possible ideas include restoring summoning points I don't know where that's uh, very useful I know restoring summoning special would be kinda nice because then you could do things like Titans where you could do more specials or things like that I don't know a lot of unless I mean, I, I don't use a lot of things outside of Yank, Steel, Titan, and a Unicorn. But if there are other things that involve more summoning points, that might be helpful. I, I can see that. But for me right now, I don't know. Reduce damage taken. That would be great. And things like Virago, if you place one down at Rise of the Six, you take a lot of damage during that. Um, Raxor, don't see it so much. Uh, if you're doing group bossing in some other places that maybe you have a lot of AoE attacks from the boss, I can definitely see that happening. KK during like mage phase, range phase, that would be awesome to place down the totem to not take a lot of damage, especially during mage phase and all those balls shoot out. If you can save your team from doing that, that would be great. 
Um, break incoming stuns. That's a cool one, I think. So anyone in a certain radius basically can't be stunned, which I think would be especially good at KK, because during that range phase at KK, he pretty much stuns you every 5 to 10 seconds in that range phase. You're shooting, you're doing rapid fire, you get stunned. During all the other phases, there are more times he stuns you. So placing that kind of a totem down at KK would be really nice. I don't know there are a lot of other places where you get ridiculously stunned. Um, I guess if you place one down at a Raxor, if, they, if they're counting things that, you know, anticipation and freedom would take away, so you couldn't be swiped if you were entangled, you would be safe from that kind of thing, that would be kind of cool. But if it's specifically just stuns, I don't know a whole lot of places. I may not know this, but there may be places like maybe Slayer tasks and stuff that I haven't done in a while where the creatures may stun you. I don't know. I'm kind of just <clears throat> out, out of my head right now. Cleanse Poisons. That would be good on a, on a Rax or Duo for the last phase. Uh, KK can poison you. That's another good place. Um, I don't know a lot of other places where I bring an Anti-Poison to. Next would be cool. Um, I haven't brought up Next at all in all these, so the stuns at Next would be kind of nice. Um, I think so. No, Nex doesn't really stun you at all. It puts you in the ice prison. That's what I'm thinking about. That's not really a stun, but you do get affected by that. So that'd be cool if you kind of get in the prison. You can do whatever you want. Anyway, but curing poison, that'd be a cool Nex thing. Uh, slow bind, per slow slash bind or provoke enemies. So you provoke the enemy. Does that like, like he's like attacking you guys, and then he's like, hey, Totem, fuck you, and then <laughs> the guy, the minion, imagine that, like, the KK of Virago looks at this Totem and just starts beating the shit out of it out of nowhere. <laughs> that would be, that'd be kind of hysterical to watch. Just ignores all the players shooting magical damaging attacks, looks at a Totem, and is like, I'm gonna wreck that shit, because it's provoking me. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but the totems would require management, such as charging with runes to keep them active longer and have diminishing effects the more um, the, <laughs> and have diminishing effects the more you have active at one time. So that's kind of cool. So you can have multiple totems down, possibly, if they're introducing multiple. And uh, if you have more totems in a certain radius, so if you stay in one area, it'll be like you'll get more of the effects. So you can't have an even distributing of both. You can't be not be able to stun and, you know, having reduced damage and you can't be poisoned. All the totems can have effect at one time, but I'm assuming it's like you have a chance to not be poisoned rather than you will be poisoned. Or you have a chance to reduce damage or their damage reduction isn't as much. So that's kind of cool. And having to require runes is a great way to bring a rune sink into the game because it's something that is extremely useful to the players um, where they can you know do their PVM a lot more runes aren't that expensive as long as it doesn't cost a unnecessarily large amount to do this and rune prices just skyrocket I can see that being really cool I've been talking about this first thing for quite a while now where's the recording we're at eight minutes and I'm only at the first topic and in the, in the introduction so like I said probably gonna be a big discussion from me about all this stuff. Shield Dome. I'm excited about this one. Create a dome that absorbs a percentage of incoming damage for all players inside. Uh, must be channeled, so kind of like the last thing where you need to, I assume, keep it up. Or channeled as in um, you need a little bit of time to kind of keep up. I think that's really cool. Um, whereas, like, you know, it's not active, like, as soon as you do it, it's active now. You have to be ready. Like, alrighty, guys, I'm going to create a dome. It'll be here in like five seconds. One second, guys. Um, <laughs> this guy, I got more karma on my silly reddit thread on this, on, I am actually making a video now on them, cool, um, <laughs> so I thought that was really cool, uh, making a shield dome, reducing all this stuff, uh, then has diminishing returns so they cannot be chained effectively, so yeah, so I assume if you were just in a prison, you can't go to the next person, just be in a prison, go to the next one, just be in this dome, so you just continuously take, like, no damage, so, I, that, that's good. Uh, intercept, leap, or teleport to a friendly character and absorb the next X damage, uh, slash attacks against them. X is increased when wielding a shield or require a line of walk operating similar. So if you see someone who's taking a lot of damage or you need to switch places with someone who is taking a lot of damage, um, message me when you're done. I will. Uh, so you can basically switch places with them. If you see someone who's kind of tanking that's not currently the tank, you can go ahead and be like, hey, 
I'll take that. Don't worry about it. It, w it would also be cool if you see someone... Um, my thought that I had when I ran through this was like Rise of the Six. I see one of my people getting like uh, spun on, and I have a good amount of health. He doesn't have a good amount of health. I could quickly channel, go over to him, and be like, "Hey, I'm gonna take some of these damage or these attacks." And apparently, I'm thieving now. We're, we're, let's, let's stop thieving. I want to mine. Thank you. Um, so you, you can do something like that. I thought that was pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, uh, something that I think is really cool is just. I just want to point this out now, so when I bring it up maybe later on, it makes more sense. It's just, I am waiting to see what kind of bosses are come from these kinds of things. Imagine there's a boss where he sends out, kind of like Virago, you know, he sends out all these bombs. And the only way to get through it is by having someone who's pre-channeled a shielding dome. Everyone gets in. They also take a certain amount of damage, but it's not a one-hit KO. That is awesome. Or having the totems. You have to have a certain totem at one time or else like the poison or the sun will get you. <coughs> Intercept is basically... Like imagine KK where he's green. You know, you kind of have to take that damage. You have to keep an eye on someone. So you need to switch places with them. I think that's kind of cool. And this, this involves a lot more communication. Um, I would think so at least. So that's kind of cool. Um, some prayers, fortitude, large increase to defense and life points and regeneration. This would be basically like the tank spell. So if you're the bomb tank at Farango or you're the tank at KK or things like that, you would pray this instead of dealing maximum amount of damage. Your life points would go up with prayer, which we haven't seen before. We've, we've seen the, sorry if I'm burping a little bit. We've seen times where... Um, you know, regeneration goes up on the normal spell book, but we don't have anything that, like, literally increases our spells, and our defense just shoots up. So any damage we're taking is being reduced by a whole lot, so the people around us who are focused on the damage and getting the boss down don't have to worry so much about, you know, that one individual player falling. This guy's pretty much protected with these spells. I mean, of course, he'll still have to manage himself and do a good job, but at the same time, we know he's probably got things covered. I mean, as things are right now, people who are really good at their abilities and being consistent on them, they have many ways to stay alive. So I think bringing this into it will be even more awesome because it gives them even more purpose to like play these roles. It's not so much, oh, I have my turmoil on or something like that. It's, you are the defense role, you have more reason, and I think it'll be even easier for players to get into roles such as bomb tanks or base tanking at Virango because they know they have an increased advantage to not die in that position that they're in. Now, of course, players will probably go back to the offensive abilities, like right now at Virago and stuff, where... People who are on the defense, being bomb tanks, are very offensive. They can stick to the spells they have now, knowing that they can get faster kills that way. But at the same time, players who are new to these instances are going to definitely have a much easier time getting used to combat mechanics and tanking and all that. Because they don't need to worry so much on um, if they're going to die. They know that they can do their role and be safe or well safer I would have to say they're not gonna be safe completely they just have a better chance um, light and dark forms while it's in light form the effect of the Saren spells is amplified dark form for zero spells so any I guess it's kinda like the charge spell on the regular spell book if anyone has ever used that uh, in recent days I know back in the day that was OP back in RuneScape classic I'm an old person if you can't tell by my 2003 bunny ears yeah yeah, I'm rocking those. Rocking those hard. Um, let's see here. Using the spell of prayer from these. Uh, from So basically, you have to choose a sign so you can boost one or the other. You can't boost both at the same time. So you can choose, oh, I'll be in dark form, so my zero spells will be powerful. Um, so that's kind of cool. You have to choose one side or the other if you want them to be amplified. Uh, this encourages picking a particular role. Yes, exactly. Um... Soul Link allows you to link with another player, sharing damage, healing, uh, prayer, summoning between you, all of those shenanigans. So basically, it's like sharing everything with someone else. So if someone else is taking damage, you're also taking damage. If someone else um, needs uh, summoning points, you'd share your summoning points. Um, and this link shown, this link will be shown graphically. So I, I guess when they say that, they mean like an actual visual like link between you guys, like some sort of animation and would break over a certain distance. Okay, back to the combat mechanics. I think this would be so cool 
if they made a boss that required you to like like a dual boss or whatever boss that required you like to link with everyone like i know that sounds so stupid and so easy but what if that'd be awesome if like the next boss like threw out an attack and the only way you could stop it is if you linked with someone so you share the damage be between you or if there's a certain point where you know not you won't you don't necessarily do more damage outside of this boss when you're linked together but there's a certain point where the boss gets to like 10k health and the only way to push him over the edge or get him to the next phase is by linking with your partner and because of that you guys need to do a threshold or an ultimate within the same you know five game ticks and in that time you can push him over to the next phase kind of like how you need to push Virago but it requires more teamwork than just throw everything at the boss and you need to be linked and already oh man I, I was thinking about all these abilities and they said how it's going to probably be like implemented into the raids that are going to be coming into runescape and i know everyone's like oh my god wowscape but raids are just a thing they happen in many games i know it's something that other games do but that doesn't mean we can't do it i think that would implement such a fun mechanic into the game working together to complete these raids ah just having an actual support class a support spell book support spells and prayers I get excited thinking about it and just the amount of activity, communication, and everything that these people are going to have to do. Like, PVM is going to change when this comes out. We're going to have roles everywhere. Ah! And this is just like the starting idea. There may be more, there may be some taken away. So I may be getting super hyped about some of these and they're not going to happen. And I'll cry. But you know what? They sound cool so far. Okay, here's a cool one. Skilling. Skilling is going to be involved in these. There will be a skilling spells and, get this, skilling prayers. I know we'll miss it. Um, made a video about this a long time ago. Like, how cool it would be to have skilling prayers. Because all prayers are these days are for combat. Just purely combat. But now you can use your prayer points to enhance your skilling. But anyway, spells coming up here. Enrichment. Enrich an inventory of divine memories. Cost, rune cost per memory. So I assume if you're doing divination, you can take all the ones that are regular and make them enriched. So yet again, another good rune sink. Players who want to increase. There's, there's police outside my window right now. Hopefully they don't find me. Um, but... <laughs> if you want to get faster experience, you need to spend money on runes, which I think is cool. It makes divination a bit easier, but at the same time, it makes a sink and a uh, necessity for these kinds of runes in the game. Uh, rapid growth. Skip a growth stage for a plant, tree, or herb at once. Now, I thought this was awesome, but I saw a point on, wow, they're just flying around my house, or not my house, my apartment right now. And I saw something on Reddit. Um, that kind of pointed this out. It would be like you would need to be switching between your spell books all the time when you're doing this. So you like plant a seed and do like your farm run. Then you have to get on this spell book. Then you have the rapid growth on everything, and then you would have to just come back. And it would be annoying. Farming would be great, but I'm kind of wondering how they're gonna do this. I saw someone suggest like a uh, spell book swap, which I think would be very great. Um, but at the same time, I don't know, maybe it's worth, you know, not having rapid growth on the same thing as lunar spells. Makes sense. Seems kind of overpowered, but it does seem like a very lunar-esque type of spell. I don't know, that's just me. Crystal Mask. Uh, when cast, it creates a crystal mask that reduces the chance of being caught pickpocketing when worn. So some more thieving things for you guys. Uh, it turns to dust after X minutes. And uh, the rune cost of this will be expensive, it says, and you only get it once per day. So I'm assuming for like 30 minutes to an hour, you can thieve to your heart's content. Basically like wearing, you know, all that pickpocketing suit and stuff in Elf City. Just more ways to thieve. Not a bad one. Crystallize. This one I'm kind of interested about. Turn a skilling, uh, turn a skilling location crystalline for 30 seconds. More XP is gained, but no resources are received. This is the kind of flat increase we'd ideally avoid, but it would help the economy, so so can be cons 
wait. But it would help the economy. So can be considered, uh, I, I assume they missed the word it here. So it can be considered a worthwhile trade-off. So basically, you spend a lot of runes, one of those skilling plots, which I assume they mean like the sawmills and all that. You can work on those, or the anvils, you know what I'm talking about, the forge. Um, you can work on those, and for 30 seconds you get more experience. But, if you're not using like a protein item, which I guess that would be kind of OP to get more experience for protein items, because you don't get resources out of it anyway. But anyway, um, if you're looking for more experience over the top, uh, like the well, people make like overload potions and stuff, or uh, kind of it's kind of just being a sink. So you can continuously get more experience for a large rune cost, but at the same time, anything you put in gets pretty much taken away. So that's kind of cool. It makes a sink for items, gives a player more experience. It says right here, you know, they're kind of iffy about this because they say they kind of want to avoid anything crazy, but they think it would help the economy. I think it would be too. Take some things out of the game. But like I said, a lot of people I know use those locations right now for the protein items. I know during like double experience weekend people use them for overloads, but I don't see a person like turning something crystalline for overloads because those are useful. That would be crazy to give up an entire overload purely just to get more experience, but I can see it. Once you kind of make enough overloads for the rest of your life, I assume the rest of them wouldn't matter. But also, would that be kind of trolly? Like, would this be a support thing? Could you just be like making overloads and then some asshole can just come by, turn it in crystalline, and then like run away? So you're just like making overloads for like 30 seconds and you're like, where are they all going? Like, I really hope they make it so when you put it down, it's yours, except aid is taken into the equation, or else people can just come along and just make you lose your resources when maybe you didn't want to in the first place. Uh, crystal tree locator tells the player the direction of the active crystal tree pretty cool but I think there are many other ways to do that if you have any 99 you can get into the 99 garden and one of the things that you can change the portal to is the active crystal tree and a lot of people have 99s in this game so I don't know if this is gonna be extremely useful but uh, we'll see I don't know what other players do um, maybe maybe it's a lot more awesome to do it this way. I don't know. It just seemed like a very interesting choice. Uh, crystal Harvest. When you cast this reasonably expensive spell, it resets the daily limit of harvesting your crystal tree in Perfendus, thus meaning you're able to harvest it, twi har harvest it twice per day. I only harvest it from time to time, but it is 15k experience in farming, so that's 30k a day. And on a double experience week, and that's 60k a day for harvesting your crystalline tree. So that's pretty good farming experience. I don't really use those crystalline things. I know they're used to make the, the uh, perfect potion, perfect skilling potion or whatever. I've never made one. I just, I don't use them all that much. I do mining. That's about it. Let's click. And no, I know in the last video I was mining and in this video I'm mining. I'm not going for 120. Well, in inadvertently going for 120 when I'm AFK or doing other things. I like to mine. It's always been my favorite skill ever since Classic, so but why not? Plus, it's easy to read and do this at the same time. Alrighty, so prayers. Gather form. While it's mining, woodcutting, fishing, or divining. D divining? Divining. Divining. Word. Um... <laughs> The, the chance of various procs are increased. Various procs are increased. Effect increases the longer it's active. Up to cap. Interrupted by combat. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I think I actually don't know what that means at all. Um, it says up to cap. So maybe I think that's when you're doing like your divine locations. You get like better things from your divine locations, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. I'm literally guessing on that one. So, okay. Lean forward skilling. Prayers that occasionally cause something to happen. 
good words, which the player can react to in order to gain extra rewards. Specifics for what these are are still open to design. Now, that's kind of, I, I assume, lean forward skilling is kind of close to when you're doing a bonfire and one of those like little fireballs come up, you can talk to it, you can get uh, charms and other things from it. I assume that's what they're getting at from the lean forward skilling. And it says something can happen. So something pops up, you gotta click on it, then you get it. Wabam. Uh, social skilling, similar to uh, protection prayers, which encourage grouping up. Okay. Uh, these skilling prayers, having, having effects such as gather form, okay, would have their effect amplified. Am I can't talk, I'm sorry would have their effect amplified when other players are nearby or have them activated. This also promotes some form of skilling or teamwork. So, uh, this is kind of like when you have this active, you're also benefiting everyone around you. This would be kind of cool, so maybe not one player has all of the things on at one time, so you can just like pass it around, like, okay, my prayer's done, okay, my prayer's done, okay, my prayer's done, and then you just kind of switch off. Maybe a boost if most, multiple people have it on, but that's kind of cool. So, in an instance like this, where we have all these people skilling around us, I can see reason for these people to want to use the prayers and uh, skill up a little harder. Uh, but we'll see what that does. Hopefully it uh, enhances experience the more people are around you and stuff to make a more social environment. That guy is very blue. Uh, chronicle Absorption. This one personally is my favorite overall. When doing divination, all chronicles are immediately converted into divination experience. So instead of you having to take all of them and go to the lady and be like, take my balls. And then she's like, excuse me, you're like my chronicle balls. And she's like, oh, okay. Um, so instead of having to do that, you can just go ahead and have them convert to divination experience on the spot. Downside, only 90% of the experience is given to you, but you don't have to leave the divination location. And as many of you may know, if you've been doing divination for a while, the more divination chronicles you get, the harder it is to retrieve um, and the next chronicle. So it just gets progressively harder and harder the more rare they get. So that's kind of awesome. So you get like the easiest chance all the time for the chronicles to be absorbed. And awesome. And that's pretty much all that's on there. This video is 27 minutes. But I just have to say, in conclusion with everything, really looking forward to this. I want everyone to talk about this. I want to hear your reactions, what you're looking forward to, what you think could be changed, um, what you think could be added. And yeah, if you've actually come this far in my video, please leave a comment down below about your thoughts on this because I would love to see that. Anyway, guys, this long ass video is done. Um, provided what comes up in the next few weeks, I may have another video very soon talking about my thoughts on some other things that have been going on in the game, which have kind of been making me upset. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for listening, and have a great day.